today for being alive and taking the test well. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to give out more as we go. You ought to have this out already, but I get it Friday, so I'm going to let it go. Getting off my rant. Okay. Um, everyone should have had a giant packet when you walked in. We're going to do something. I'm going to go against what everyone else is doing today. We're going to do some cute doodle notes instead to interest the key class options. That's what you should have picked up on the podium on your way in. But don't worry, we're going to get back to the notes. We're going to do notes too. We're, I just wanted us to do piecewise in a more fun way because otherwise piecewise can be a little, a little daunting. Okay, so starting with this math workshop, there's this weird graph about this girl, Anne, and she went on a bike trip, and this shows her how it went on her ride. And it says write a function to represent her total distance traveled in miles in terms of the time. Okay, so first of all, let's make fun of poor Anne. She did go 10 miles total. How many hours did it take her to go those 10 miles? 10. So she went how much per hour then? How many miles did she travel in one hour? It took her 10 hours to go 10 miles. So how many miles did she do per hour? One. So for D of T, we're just going to put T. She ended up going 10 miles, because if we plug in T is 10, oh, well, that is how many miles she went. Okay, but poor Ann, and we say poor Ann, and actually she did a pretty good job, especially on that last stretch. But there is a point where she stopped traveling from three, four hours to seven hours. She took a three-hour break. So we were making fun of poor Ann, and she's actually not as bad as we think she is. She took a three-hour break. I'm sure if I was taking a 10-hour bike ride, I would take a three-hour break as well, if not a 10-hour break. I don't know. My gosh. You th I mean, she was going really fast at first. She almost hit halfway there, and then she stopped. I don't know. Okay, so then for the next one, we're going to let go of Ann's bike ride because we can analyze that all day long. Um, the next question says, if the graph of a relation crosses the y-axis at more than one point, is the relation sometimes, always, or never a function? Explain your reasoning. I would love to hear someone's thoughts on this. I want to add a point to table 6, table 3, table 2, table 5, table 4, and table 1. Ooh, look, everyone got a point. More points available, though. Is a graph that crosses the y-axis at more than one point, is that sometimes, always, or never a function? Always. It's always a function? The y-axis. So let's make it cross that y-axis twice. Is that going to be sometimes, always, or never a function? Why is it never? Because it's touching, so like, look, I'm going to make this fake graph. Or I can make... Mm, in a different color, why don't I make one that looks like this? Table two, do you want me to take a point away from you? Okay, cool. Could look like this. Either way, either the blue or the black, it fails what? It does. So I know Eduardo answered it originally first, so let's give table six a point. So no, it's a never. And the reason is because it would fail the pencil test or the technical name was vertical line test. Okay, I hate to break your heart, but those that did finish their test know your test is not graded yet. Cold stink, let me tell you. Maybe mine will go away with time. Okay, are there any questions about this math workshop? Then let's get to our piecewise function doodle notes. Now, doodle notes are supposed to be pretty, and we're going to make ours colorful. But to begin with, you've got to use a pencil. I know I normally am color crazy, but to start off, to graph a piecewise function, we have got to use a pencil because we can all use mistakes. We can all make mistakes. Do you need a pencil, babe? Yeah, it's on my desk. And if you're a note stickler, this is going to break your heart. 
table five. You're so quiet. Well, you're out of point. Um, it's going to break your heart. But for today, we're going to skip page 21 and 22 in our notes. I do not promise that we're going to go back and fill them all in. Um, your homework, it says, is page 23 and 25 in your notes. So I gave you a new giant packet. That second page is supposed to be your homework. But, and this is the part I didn't write on the board, so I'm praying Patrick is listening to me. Even though it says page 23 and 25 is your homework, it would be smart of him to go ahead and get, like, page 23 done. That would be smart. Because page 23 and 25 together, there's five questions on the first one, but it has multiple parts. And then there are 16 on the second one. Oh, my goodness, it's got a lot of questions. So that seems overwhelming. I agree. But here's the fun part. It's not going to be due until Wednesday. It's not going to be due until Wednesday. But what I don't need Patrick to do is to wait until Tuesday night and try to knock them all out at once. I'm hoping today when I stop rambling. Patrick, did you finish your test yesterday? No, ma'am. Okay, well, we'll pretend Patrick did. I'm hoping if Patrick finished his test yesterday that he will go ahead and get part of that done today. That way he has less work to do this weekend and come Monday. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret as to Monday. I will not be here. So you will have a sub. So you have a worksheet on piecewise functions. Now, it spells stuff out, but the, um, geez, please, we'll still pick on Patrick. Patrick has to show his math in order to get all his points won in order to get his points for that assignment, yes. As for his group getting points, you know darn well if that sub writes me any note with any name member of your group, I'm not going to give your group the five points for that day. I will not. So in order to get your five out of five for Monday, you're going to have to be doing math in math class, not texting on your phone and doing other things that you shouldn't be doing. Because I have eyes, you know. I will find out what you did and take your points away from you and your group for that easy grade. Okay, so moral of that story is you can't miss piecewise today because even though piecewise can be kind of difficult for some, uh, Patrick, regardless, has a worksheet on piecewise stuff on Monday. So he's got to try to get it. Or if he really doesn't understand, I will leave a note that it's okay if he's on Google Classroom to watch some part of the video again. I will leave that little addendum. Okay, so we're going to fill in these two little blanks because I hate blanks on notes, but I don't really like their terms, but we'll put them anyway. It says, a piecewise function is made up of sub-functions. That's technically true. And then each portion is defined by a different equation or a different interval, and they're calling that different interval a subdomain. Never in my life have I seen the word sub-function or subdomain until I saw these doodle notes. So that is not a term you need to remember. Piecewise function kind of tells you in the name what happens. They take a bunch of pieces and they push it together and they call it a function. So a bunch of different random pieces. Okay, so we have some examples about how to graph some piecewise functions. And that's the hardest part. So our example says... We need to graph the line 1 half x minus 1. So they went down to minus 1. And this is what they did. I'm going to show you what they did. And we'll practice it in just a second. So they had the graph 1 half x minus 1. Well, they did what you and I would have done. They went down to minus 1. They put their point. And then the slope was 1 half. So they counted up 1 and over 2. And then down 1 and left 2. And they kept on going. But you see, what's weird about piecewise functions is that they have a specific given interval. So we graph a line, we graph it for real, and then we see, oh my goodness, they only want that line when x is less than negative 2. So they figure out where negative 2 is. Hey, that's over here. So everywhere we had above negative 2, they say, well, we didn't want that line, so they erased it. I really didn't show you all that because that takes time. But that's what they did. And that's how they came up with this line down here. Now, someone who's worked with interval notation, will you explain why when it said less than, they didn't fill in that circle? Okay, so over here where it says represents, 
if they put an open circle, that means that we have less than or greater than, said this correct, and he can have a point for that. And I'm going to write in English a value not included, if that helps you, but it doesn't really. I think less than or greater than is the best thing we could write. So when it, when the reason we have that open circle at negative 2 is because our inequality said, zoom out, come on, almost, there we are, because our inequality didn't have that equal to sign with that top one. So that's why it's an open circle. Okay, so that seems okay. But if you notice, the piecewise function here is made up of two pieces. I'm holding up three. Go to grief. It's made up of two pieces. We, we talked about how they graph that pink piece. Now let's talk about how they're going to graph this blue piece. They go down to negative two because the intercept is, I mean, negative three because the intercept's at negative three. They put their point. And then they see that the slope is 2x, so they count up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, down 2, left 1. And they, they probably graphed a giant line that even went on down here. They did. I'm sure they did. But then they read on what domain they wanted it, and they specifically want this line when x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So everywhere that's below that negative 2 line that you and I drew, they don't want that blue graph. So they erased it. They only want that blue graph from negative 2 on, on that x-axis. So that x-axis is helping us figure out where to erase. And for this specific example, since the change is happening at negative 2, we erase the pink when it was above negative 2, and we erase the blue when it was below negative 2. Now I'm just confident. Why are we erasing stuff? Well, if you and I hadn't erased it and we had left the other lines there, they wouldn't have passed the vertical line test. It wouldn't have been a function. But now that we've made it super ugly with a pink piece, a giant break, and then a blue print piece, it technically is a function. Okay, so let's go over to this part over here. What am I going to put in where it says a closed circle? Um, technically, it's passing. That is a good question. Technically, isn't it passing that vertical line test? Because we're coming over here, and then at here, is there technically a value there? No. You would say it fails right here on that pink line, but it's an open circle there and a closed circle there, so technically it passed it. But if Seth does it wrong and he fills in both circles just for kicks and giggles, is that a function? No, it's failed that vertical line test. So one of them's got to be open if they're at the same point. Okay, so it says a closed circle. I need to put in some stuff. This part's easy. Any group want to help me out? Seth's already done the hard part. Yes, dear? When do you have a closed circle? Less than or greater. Less than or equal to, or what's the other? Greater than or equal. Perfect, and we'll give table two the point. And so it's a value that's technically included. So back to the whole, the main thing that people do wrong with piecewise functions is they forget to pay attention to the second part. But the second part tells us everything we need to know. That blue line is including negative two. That's why we get to fill in that circle at negative two. Okay. So then I've kind of already showed you my tricks, which is what this next bottom part is saying. I use a dotted line as like a fence between territories. And then I determine who the owner of the fence. Who's the owner of the fence? So looking at our last example, my fence was that dotted line I put at negative 2. And then I was deciding who owned it. Did the pink line own it or did the blue line own it? And we decided because of the equal to sign, the blue line owned it. Okay, so we're going to practice another example. And oh my goodness, this one's going to have three different parts. So first thing I need to know, if I was going to write down steps to myself, the first thing I'm going to do is figure out some fences. I'm going to figure out some fences. And how do I figure out what points of fences? Well, I look at my different inequalities. I'm needing to put a fence at negative 3, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. 
And I'm needing to put a fence at one other point. What's the other point I need to put a fence at? Two, and Seth's group gets a point. Because the other value mentioned in the equalities is two. So I'm going to go over to two, one, two, and I'm going to put another fence. Again, those fences are just kind of placeholders. That's my way of knowing something big is going to happen there. Okay, and the next thing I knew my step two is I graph, but you better do it in pencil. Okay, so for our first function, we're going to graph the line. It's going to have a negative slope. We're going to graph negative x minus 3 because that's what it said to do. The first one it said was negative x minus 3. So negative x minus 3, normally we'd have gone down here to negative 3, which is off the grid. And then I cheated, so I know some tricks. So I know, and this is just, again, if I could fit it in, I would. So we started at negative 3 down here, which is off the grid. And the slope was negative 1, so we went up 1 to the left 1, up 1 to the left 1, up 1 to the left 1. So I know my first point is here. In real life, when it's not these cute doodle notes, you have a nice, pretty grid with lots of room. Mackenzie can make that old judgment call on her own. Okay, so, but we're still going to keep going. I, I'm just saying my first point is there. Oh, my goodness, my pencil broke. What a terrible pencil it is. Okay, and then I've got to go up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. And I can keep going forever. But Mackenzie's line still goes this way. However, that pink fence line kind of helps her know what part to erase. And it's terrible that I've written in pencil. I wish I had pens that erase, but that pink fence line helps her know down here she doesn't need stuff because she's only wanting this blue line, negative x minus 3, until we get to that first fence. So she's wanting it over here, yes, all the way until that first fence. Oh my goodness, we've hit a fence. At this fence, I have to make a judgment call. Am I going to put an open circle or am I going to put in a closed circle? Okay, so again, let me say this slowly. So first thing we did was we graphed our line in pencil. And when I was connecting the dots, the second I hit that fence, I realized I needed to erase. So if I had to write in a step three, it would probably be erase, erase, graph, after, fence. Sounds stupid, but it's true. Once we hit that fence, we don't want that black line anymore. Okay, and then I interrupted Seth. He was having a thought. This point is very important to us. Those fence points are very important to us. We need to look back at the top at our inequality and decide, should Miss Compton color in that black circle or should she leave it open? So if we look, our inequality was less than negative 3. So am I going to color it in or am I going to leave it open? I'm going to leave it open so it's good the way it is. Okay, so then let's go to our next part. I need some other colors. Let's go to our next line, and we'll do it in purple. So it says the next line we need to graph is negative 2x plus 3. So we're going to graph that middle line. The first one we did in blue, the next one we're doing in purple. And it is negative 2x plus 3. So if we're graphing the line negative 2x plus 3. You and I both know we put our first point at 3. And then since it's negative 2, we go down 2 and then to the right one. Yeah, yeah I told you I always have to think through it. It needs to lean left. Down 2 and then to the right one. And oh my goodness, I've hit a fence. So something's going on there. So I'm just going to leave it and leave it open. i got to think this through. I might come back and color it in. I don't know. And then I still got to graph my line the other way. I'm going to go up to left one, up to left one, up to left one. Oh my lord, I've hit another fence. So what stinks about this middle, guys, we've got two different decisions to make about when to color stuff in. And I pray your line looks better when you connect the dots in mine. That is the ugliest line if I ever did see. Okay, so we graphed the middle one, and now we erased. And then technically, I guess I should have added a step four. You got, got to make a decision. I'm going to put decision 
about fence points because we've got to decide are we clearing them in or are we leaving them open. Okay, so back over here at negative 3, looking at our inequality, are we supposed to color in this point? Look at our inequality. Yes, why? Because it's, yes, okay, so it says equal to, so we're going to get to color that bad boy in. I heard it from table 1 and 5. You can get yourself a point. Okay, and then I go to 2, because that's my other fence point, because poor purple had two different fence points. When I get to this fence point, do I color it in? Yes, because, and every group can have a point, because I see it's an equal to again. So, I'm not going to lie, piecewise functions look a hot mess. Right now we got this black line, then the jump to this purple line, and we're still not even done. We've still got to do a green line. Uh, the green line's easy. It is f of x equals 3, which means we're going to go to that y-axis at 3. So, 1, 2, 3. Now I'm going to fill in, I'm going to put a circle. Now you and I could have graphed this line all the way this way. But again, that, that fence point let me know I really only needed the graph over here. To the left, I'm not needing that graph. I've already got that black and that purple taken over there. If I were to put that green line over here too, it wouldn't be a function because I'd have a bunch of lines crossing and it would just be a hot mess. But I mean, honestly, piece plus functions already look like a hot mess. Okay, so we graphed it. We erased the graph. And now we've got to make a decision about this fence point. On the green graph, are we going to color in the spot at 2? Uh, no. No, why? Because not greater than It's not. It's only got that greater than. Okay. Are there any questions about this? Flip it over to the back. We are going to save these until Tuesday. Graphing piecewise functions is a pain in the rear. Pain in the rear. Pain in the rear. However, there is something really fun about piecewise functions that, that's mostly going to be your worksheet on Monday. So I think you got three different things to do on Monday. One of them is super easy. You got to match, they give you three different piecewise functions and you got to match it to a graph. Everyone can do that. You just got to decide which graph goes with which piecewise function. I'm not even asking Will to graph. I'm asking him to match a graph to a piecewise function. He can do that. He could have done that without this lesson. The second worksheet is about evaluating. So if you'll go to your new notes, we will do one problem out of them. We'll do the very first problem and only this one. Because honestly, Seth only needs me to do this one, and then he's going to have evaluating. So I agree. Graphing piecewise is a pain in the rear. You're not going to have to do that all on your own on Monday. We're going to talk more about it on Tuesday. Would it be smart of Will to go ahead and start his graphing homework if he understands? Yes. But if he's still confused, I promise I'll clear up his graphing confusion on Tuesday. Meanwhile, the easy part with piece, piecewise functions is whenever they say the word evaluate. My God. Life gets so much easier then. Okay, so we have this function, and they want us to evaluate it at these three different points. But again, the most important thing about a piecewise function is these little intervals. They tell us everything we need to know. So for instance, with our example, we see that, that if we were drawing a graph, where would we put our fence line at? I heard it from 5 and 1. You can get a point. We would put our fence line at zero. Zero is super important to us. But we're really smart. Is negative 2 less than zero or is negative 2 bigger than zero? It's less than. So the cool thing is, I don't have to plug it into both. Since negative 2 is less than zero, I'm only going to plug it into that top one because it's for all the numbers that are less than zero. So I'm going to do negative 2 squared and I get positive 4. Seth is wasting his time if he plugs it into both. You do not have to do that. You think about where your point would fit in given those intervals, and you plug it into that corresponding piece. Okay, so that first one was easy. The second one is tricky. Zero. 
Do I plug it into the top part of my piece or the bottom part of my piece? Well, which one's equal to zero? They're not both. The second one has equal to zero. You don't get to plug it in both. You've got to decide which one is it. So we've got to plug it into that bottom one. So we have zero plus one, and we get one. I'm telling you, people hate graphing piecewise, but everybody likes evaluating. You get to make a fun decision really fast. It's easy math. Life is good. It's so good. And then when you get to one, life is even easier. Do we pick the top one or the bottom one? We pick the bottom one because uh, one is bigger than zero. So we're going to do one plus one, which is two. Now, of course, Ms. Compton picked the easiest example in the world, didn't she? Yes, she did. Because look, number one had super easy functions. Look down at number three. Let's look at it for half a second. We'll do one of those. Number three, oh my God, Miss Compton. They have square root stuff. They did all the things. It's going to be okay. So we'll do Seth. You've been so helpful today. Okay. Negative six, seven, or nine. Which one? Okay, so if we're doing the negative six one, which piece do we pick? Top, middle, bottom? For negative six. He picked the top because it's got that equal to negative six. So we're going to do nine minus eh, so negative six squared. So it's going to be nine minus positive 36, and I'm so glad he picked that one because some people would square negative 6 squared and get negative 36 and break my heart. <coughs> what is 9 minus 36? Negative 27? Yeah. yeah, thank you, Hunter. Thank you, Seth. Okay, well, I'm glad he picked that one because it let us practice the you and your negative square, but that's not the one I would have picked. I would consider picking 9. Uh, if we plug in for 9, are we picking the top, middle, or bottom? Why are we picking the bottom? Because it's greater than 8. 9 is greater than 8, so we're picking that bottom piece. So we're going to do 3 over 9 plus 7. So we've got 1 third plus 7. And I'm going to, at this time, let it go if you change its decimals, because I just don't care at this moment. But you know me, I'm going to turn it into fractions. I'm going to say that's... 21 over 3 is the same thing as 7. So my answer is 22 over 3. When Natalie gives me that decimal, it's going to be okay. But her puzzle worksheet on Monday, she's probably going to have to uh, figure things out. One of them is something about Homer Simpson. I thought I was being cute. I was proud. Okay, we need to do the middle one. That one was the one that was most important to me, actually. Why is it most important to me? Number 7? Yeah, the 7 one, yeah. It's, so which one do I put the 7 into? The middle one. Okay, I thought that one was the trickiest one, and you knew that. So 7 minus 3, we end up with square root of 4, which is 2. Moral of this story, Gracie hates graphing piecewise functions. They are a pain. Evaluating super easy if you pick the right piece. If Valeria is putting things into two different pieces, she is doing something wrong with her life. I think I talked too long.